Welcome to Land the House. I'm Seth. I have three different solar installs here on my property. I've got this one right here, which is for my house. I've got an off-grid tiny house and also an off-grid workshop. I want to do an update video for you. If you have been watching my channel for a while, then you've seen all of these being installed. If you're new to the channel, I want to walk through these and just show an update for how they've performed over the past year. So let's go ahead and start with my house install right here. As you can see, I have 12 panels mounted for a total of 3 kilowatt. Now, the initial panels were these four up here, and then I added the others later. You can uh, see a little bit of a color difference between these up here and these down here because I spray painted to uh, kind of match. They were originally black. So uh, those are all mounted. I installed them myself, and let me show you what that mount looks like. So I have either four by sixes or four by fours sunk about two foot in the ground. And those are, yeah, that's a very steep hill. Coming up here to a two by six. And that two by six is bolted onto the four by four, as you can see right there. And then I've used Unistrut, which is also called uh, Super Strut. It's this metal channel. And the spacing here on these holes worked out perfectly for mounting to the panel. So if you're looking to do a, a install yourself, that was um, pretty quick and easy. I cut some aluminum bar down here, you can see, and used some all thread to lock the panel uh, mount to the wood frame and did that on each of them. Now, you'll see I had to uh, link these pieces right here on the other links over here. I uh, did not have to do that, only on these uh, four panels up top here. Now, as far as the wiring goes, I have three different rows of panels. So the, each row is set in series, and then those go in parallel. So it's uh, series and parallel. And so uh, that power goes into this three-way uh, connector here, and then sends all the power down to the house. And so uh, basically it's um, positive, negative, positive, negative, all the way down. And then the single positive comes back and hooks up there. And the single negative hooks up down right there. So that's how it is on all three different rows of panels. And so the wire ends up right here, goes down to the house. And I've got that buried up under here. And it goes down to my little power shed. Let's step down there and take a look at that. I used to have my electronics up under the house and decided to move them out here. So I built a two x four frame, which is set up above the ground a foot or so. And uh, the inside and outside are lined with the concrete board. So hopefully if there ever was a fire, it would not cause any issues. Let me break down all the electronics for you here. So let's start off with where the solar comes in at. Right down here, this piece of conduit has the solar in. The red wire goes up here to the breaker. You can see right here it says solar. And that comes out and goes over to this charge controller. I've got solar right there. Currently, we've only got uh, 370 watts or so coming in. And that's because the house is really not using much at all and the batteries are full. So once the power comes into the Midnight Classic, it then goes down to charge the batteries. And so you can see here, I've got uh, two rows of batteries. So they're all connected, which means I've got a 48 volt battery and I've got uh, two different uh, rows there. Um, so you can see how they're um, all connected here, all connected there, and then a single uh, out on the ends. Anyway, so 48 volt battery. I have got on the negative side a shunt here, and that lets my app read various um, inputs and outputs to the batteries. And so my negatives all go up over to the different components. Um, we'll get to that in a second. And so the positive comes up to a couple of these bus bars and then over to various switches. So we've got the uh, solar um, classic right there, and that's what this one is. So that one would turn off the batteries to 
the charge controller. And then I've also got a hydro, which we're not doing in this video. And then this up here goes to my different inverters. So under the house on the main panel, I have got a couple of amp clamps, which read the power coming in from the grid. And so basically I can uh, supplement the house power with these two inverters. Let's see, that one's got 135 watts feeding the house. That one's got 136, 39. Um, so these will run up to about uh, seven or 800 watts each. I've got them limited down a little bit, um, so they're never running at full force. But anyway, so together they can produce somewhere around uh, 14 to 1600 watts into the house. So that basically allows me to use the panels all the time or solar all the time to supplement my house power. Now I also have this leg going up right here to this breaker to my off-grid inverter. So this is the Sun Gold Power 6000 watt inverter. It's currently turned off in the house through this switch over here, um, but that will let me use up to um, 6000 watts in the house if I need to have that kind of power. Um, currently I've only got one uh, outlet in the house, so I can't use that much power. Um, but anyway, that's uh, what that big box right there is for. Currently, I just have these two conduit going into the house, and that's where all the wires are going into. As far as the update goes, I had to use my off-grid system a couple times this winter when the power was out and it worked very well just to run the refrigerator um, for a couple of hours while the power was down and the power is back on and uh, no issues there. This right here saves somewhere around 30 bucks a month on my power bill by supplementing the solar on the house. If I had purchased some larger inverters, I think it could have, uh, it could be doing a little bit better. And if I had more battery storage in the uh, little shed here. But as far as uh, functionality goes, working flawlessly. The electronics kept the little power shed warm enough not to hurt the batteries. And then it seems to stay cool enough back here in the shade that it's no problem in the summer either. So that's the update on the house system. Let's move over to the tiny house. This is my tiny house. I'm currently working on finishing it up, but it has a very new solar install. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. My panel over here is just kind of resting on a little makeshift frame of wood. And it's a 180 watt panel. Brings power in through that piece of conduit over there. Let's go inside and see the electronics here. Over here on the back wall, I've got the inverter, the battery, charge controller, and also a couple of switches that will allow me to go from this system to a power station. So as you can see right here, I've got five watts coming in, and that's basically just keeping the battery topped off at the moment. There's no power being consumed, so I have to turn on my inverter switch Let's see, power saver off should do it. Now this is the same kind of switch because it's the same kind of inverter as the one over in the house. So if you come over here and look at this, this is a 3000 watt sun gold power inverter. And it's got uh, a little display showing 14 volts, 13.9 volts on the battery. This is a lithium iron phosphate battery. And now we've got 44 watts coming in from the panel because this is consuming power and also I've got some lights on in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip on a bunch of lights and we'll see how much power comes in from this panel. Let's turn on every light in the place. One more in here. There we go, about 112 watts coming in now. So you can see that is uh, running those lights quite well. To break things down real quick, the solar wire comes into this breaker box, which goes down here to the switch. The switch either says feed the charge controller or feed this right here, which is an Anderson plug that can charge up a power station. So currently it's going over to the charge controller, which then charges up the battery through the red and black cables there. Um, the battery then goes to the inverter which will um, then go up to this top switch up here, 
that either goes to the breaker box or um, allows a power station to go to the breaker box. So it's uh, kind of opposite. This one has a single input and two outputs. This one has two inputs and a single output. Let me show you this change over here. You can see the light is on right now from the inverter. So let's go ahead and once again, turn the inverter off. And now you can see the light is off. So we can go over here and we can flip that off. And in a second, we'll see, um, oh, actually that's not gonna change because it's hooked up to the battery, but we can go up here, flip that to power station, and then flip this to power station. And so now we should be able to hook up this extension cord to this power box. Okay, and if I turn on the AC, our light just flipped on right there. And so now if I flip on all these lights again to use a good bit of power from that box. Let's see, we're pulling uh, 67 watts out of it currently. Very good. Now, we turn that off. All the lights in the place went off. Now, this power station is not a pass-through power, so you have to have the AC off before it will start charging. And so now I can take my solar panel from outside, hook this up to it. Okay, hopefully you can see that. We've got 116 watts coming in from outside charging up that battery. I've only had this solar install here on the tiny house about a month, but it is working flawlessly. Let's step over to my off-grid shed and see another type of solar install. I have two solar panels out here for my off-grid workshop. Let me show you how they are mounted real quick. So I just built this little wooden frame and only the backside has been sunk into the ground because this is my septic tank drain lines. So I didn't do anything with the front besides just put some blocks up here to keep the wind from blowing it around. So I've got the two panels mounted on more of this unistrut. Instead of doing it up and down, I just went uh, side to side here and it seems to be doing okay. I probably could have used an extra support here in the middle um, but I think it's doing okay. Uh, so if we go up under here and look at the wiring, I've got the negative and positive coming down. So these panels are in series. So I've got the negative to positive and then they just uh, run on down into some conduit over here. And that makes this a total of 500 watts going to my off-grid workshop. So let's follow this conduit down here to the shop. Whenever I step into the shop, I've got a light switch over here, which you can see is already turned on, but there's no lights in here yet. I've got another switch wired up here. And when you flip that one on, then the lights turn on here in the shop. The reason for that is because I have taken the switch out of my inverter and run it over to the door so I don't have to weasel my way through all this stuff to get to that, to turn everything on. Let's go ahead and run through the install real quick. The black and red wires from the solar panels are coming up right here. Red one goes to a breaker, which turns on or off the solar. From there, it goes to the Midnight Classic charge controller, and that basically charges up this lithium iron phosphate battery. This is the ReliBat, which is a really cool battery because it has a heating function in there. So if it's below freezing, it will heat itself up with the solar until it's able to uh, begin charging. Um, so that is a nice feature. Of course, I'll have links to these things down below if you wanna check them out. From the battery, it then goes to this 1000 watt Ampeak uh, inverter. This is not a pure sine wave. I'm gonna get one of those uh, pretty soon to test out here. And uh, this one's a little bit different install because I have got this uh, relay right here. And so basically, if the Midnight Classic reads the battery has dropped down too low, it will shut off the system uh, so that the inverter 
doesn't produce any more power out. Uh, the inverter will still be on and it'll drain the battery, but it won't be pushing the AC out. So it won't go uh, as bad as it would if you left that on. Uh, so anyway, that just turns on or off the AC output. So I can turn on my studio lights here and we can see on the display uh, that right there is um, pulling in about 100 watts from uh, the panels out there. Whenever I leave, turn that off and I'm good to go. I use my off-grid shed several times a week and I've only had one issue with the solar power install. And that is I left the um, inverter on and it drained my battery down to very low. I think it was like eight or nine volts. Uh, so that definitely was an issue. But after turning off that switch, I don't have that problem anymore. So this whole system has worked very well over the past couple of years. I hope you found this video interesting. If you have, hit that thumbs up button. If you're not subscribed, be sure to subscribe. I have a hydro system coming up on the way that I think you'll find entertaining. Thanks for watching. I'm Seth with Flanda House, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.